with William going down and working with the lads, and I think we can do more of that. And me, so I'll, I'll do a quick introdu- okay, to, sorry, uh, introduction John. myself. So I am John Kerrigan, I manage Like a Geo Systems in Ireland. I work yeah. very closely with my distribution partners, SIS and LES. Again, they are always available and, and are always anxious to work with institutional partners all around the country. Um, I look after a lot of, uh, the, so I'm based in Northern Ireland. My head office is Milton Keynes, so I married a woman from Armagh, living in Armagh now, but it, he, but it means I look after North and South. Um, I'm basically I'm part of the, the CISA group, I'm part of the Northern Ireland BIM region, I'm a member of RICS and SESI and ICS, so lots of different bits and pieces that people are always asking me to work with, but I'm happy to do so. Um, but today I'm here, I'm going to be talking about our technology. So like a Geosystems, we're a technology organisation. Um, so I want to just give sort of an understanding of, of, of where we are. So I'm going to have a look there. We've, we've started, I'll, I'll kick this off. So I've seen this there. Did anyone see this the other day? Okay, on LinkedIn. So city centre power cut cost up to a million business groups say. So start my presentation. Usually I start talking about this. Okay, so I just cut this in and threw it straight into the middle of my presentation because it's very, very valid. We have sensors that are able to go out in real time when pipes go into the ground to map them to centimetre accuracy. We can do this now, and we don't understand why organisations that are potentially putting pipes in the ground aren't collecting these assets. They're assets, there's value to these things. Actually knowing where they are in space so that you can track them and then with other work later on down the line, you're gonna have to work around these systems. Why aren't we doing it now? And again, we've got systems, handheld systems that are connecting them up to, we have this bring your own device. So you actually buy the antenna off us, but it connects up to your mobile phone and can work. What it does, it overrides the GPS in your phone and starts giving you centimeter accuracy in the field on a mobile phone. So you don't have to go to the expense of buying sort of systems like this. You have one little um, antenna, you can put it onto a pole, you can use your mobile phone or your tablet or whatever on, on site and get, and get centimeter accuracy. We also work with Xeno, uh, with Esri, so they, any of their Esri apps can go onto these as well. So we're working high accuracy in a GIS. And again, an example of this, before the pipes are, are covering over, we have, we're working with machine control as well, so we can actually put sensors on the machine um, to, to understand and put avoidance. So you could map this whole area here, you could send it digitally up to the machine, so when it's, when, it, when it's trying to avoid something, it knows exactly how deep it can dig to avoid all those things. So we have all those things in place. And again, the data and having good, having no data sometimes is better than having poor data. So knowing that something is in there sort of gives some sort of assurances, but actually that's what, that's what problems have So having poor data is actually having no data because you will have a different mindset. Um, and it's an interesting one. We've done uh, a lot of work with utility companies in the UK um, as, well, as well as Ireland here. And they say utility companies, four million holes are dug um, each year. And there's a, an estimation of about 60,000 underground cable strikes. And we've done a project with Balfour BE and Volker Vessels where they've used this kind of a solution. They've used a cable detection system connected up to, a, to a, 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 an app on a phone. And basically, before any digs are done, they have to go out, go across their site to ensure that they can't hit any services. It's very simple. It goes in and then reports are created and can sent. So before a dig is done, they go out, they can send that straight into the office. The office says, yes, we're happy enough that there's nothing down there. You've done everything correctly. Go dig. So again, something like this is a, an example of the map that's, that's, that's sent. Um, and the guys... Like these figures are astonishing, I believe. Balfour Beatty, when they did this project in 2015, had no recorded incidents of cable strikes and vocal vessels reducing by 75%. But it's interesting, like in the past, people were still using the cable detection systems, but what they were doing is they were just they were holding the buttons in in the cable detections when they were driving the site so that when they were checked later on, they said, Yeah, but look, I did use it, you know what I mean? But nothing was tracked on it. By actually linking it up to a map and actually being able to go out around the site and show exactly around the site where, where they actually did the, the, did the detection is, uh, is very, very important. And again, we have a suite of these. So we have GPR connected up to our position, high accuracy positioning, along with cable detection, going into a software. Again, and this is going to become more and more prevalent. You're going to see a lot more of this with PAS 128 um, over in the UK. We're seeing, hearing a lot of that in Ireland now as well. Um, you're going to see a lot more of this. So getting on to our instrumentation, Brian, earlier on, um, 
showed he's using the different manufacturers, but again, a lot of the manufacturers are getting into this BIM world and how we look at our data. And it was very interesting, the, the slide you had at the end with the guy trying to sell the machine gun, that's me every single day of the week, you know what I mean? You have to work with your guys, but every day of the week, that's what I do. <laughs> So talking about potentially using these total stations, connecting up to your iPad so we can connect our total stations up to our iPads, working in, in BIM, in the layout, point layout app, Autodesk point layout app, or using our own, our own. So we can bring an IXC, bring it into the layout, obviously, and then connect up to our total stations and set out in the fields, or using our own software, bring the IFC directly into the software, so we're working off the Revit file in our software and setting out in the fields. Also machine control, very, very relevant, bringing this information into the machine, so the machines that are doing all the diggings are using the same information as the guy on, on the building sites. And again, when we think of building, or BIM, for building information model, infrastructure jobs, all this is the very same. It's virtual, it's digital construction, so all this can go into machine control for the diggers and excavators and, and dozers as well. So here's an example of an IFC file. You have your hierarchy here that you can go in and turn on and off. Again, this software, since this video is made, has improved again, so it makes it easier to get around the software. So we can start seeing where we can turn off. We only want to concentrate on, on one floor. We only want to concentrate on the piping in that floor. We can turn everything else off and then on the software, highlight it and say, I want to stake out to that point there. So making life very, very easy for the guys easier for the guys on site to start, to start staking out. We've also got this slider bar, uh, again, so we can very quickly isolate an area where we want to work uh, in our software. So we have two variants of our software, we've got like Icon and Captivate, and again, uh, with Captivate, we can still bring IFC in via Infinity into our, into our instrumentation here, but Captivate has other sort of apps, and we, these are all app-driven icons with apps um, on them, and this is one we have here called Inspect Surfaces. For instance, you had a concrete slab, you wanted to know that it was set out, it was poured correctly, you wanted on-site validation before you leave site to say that this slab was poured correctly. You have a model of the slab, you put it into the instrument, the instrument will scan, so this is a scanning total station, as it can scan a thousand points a second, it can scan and on-site create reports to tell you actually if that concrete slab was in the right position, if it was poured correctly, you can actually then do some edits to it before it goes off, you know what I mean? You can actually start doing these things live on site. We're seeing this type of work in, uh, being used in Hinkley Point. In Hinkley Point, they're spraying the concrete onto these walls for this big um, nuclear generator, but they have to have it at a certain thickness. And they can't go over that because if too much concrete goes on, then it's, it doesn't go off in time. Too little, it doesn't, it, you know what I mean, it's not enough. So they're scanning the wall continuously with this app, making sure that there's enough concrete, getting these reports, sending these reports back to the office, say yes, there's enough concrete being sprayed onto the walls. Again, you can pick point to point, and again, reports, live reports in the field. And again, I talked about machine control, but here, here we have the example software in the excavator, dozers, graders, loaders, scrapers, drillers for piles, um, rollers, any, any machine that's on a site, we can put machine control on them to make sure that there's no guy on the site walking, putting in pins, or anything like that. It's all done um, in, in, in devices like this. And again, we're constantly coming out with new generations of, of technology. And this is a, an interesting one that just came out. It's called the gs t It has an IMU in the GPS. So now we don't even have to, to straighten up the staff to look at the bubble anymore. The IMU is compensating in space for where the level is. So all you do is just look at, when you're sitting out on site, you're just looking at the screen and it's compensating for where the, the bottom of the pole is and you just go straight to the point. So in the past where you would have had to level up the pole, right, I need to go another 10 mil, level up the pole, I need to go another five mil like this, none of that, that's all taken care of. The IMU is in space and you just go and you just hit, boom, straight onto the point. Also, you can level and survey into buildings. So it's got what they call a, an angle of dangle, so it can go down to minus si at 60 degrees from the zenith down and actually survey in at 60 degrees. So I have a video, but um, I think we're tight for time, we'll keep going. Moving on from that, we have mobile mapping sensors, so something like this, backpack, it's 13 kg, it's got five cameras, two laser scanners on it, GPS, when you're outside, it's positioning yourself um, to centimeter accuracy using post-process GPS, using these scanner, scanners to do a profile of its area that it's in, it can work to 60 meters, 
So let's have a look at this. This is a job we were at the, we have a, a user group meeting every year, and last year, last February, it was in Dublin. So this is Dublin Castle, and my colleague Juan Maginal walked around 15, 20 minutes walking around, processed this in a bit, about an hour. Uh, you can start seeing the data, but also interestingly, you'll see here that it works inside. So he was able to walk inside, and it's using a technology called SLAM, which is simultaneous location and mapping, to actually position itself internally. So again, anyone wants more information about this, we can do it. It also has a lighting system, so we map the whole of the Paris sewers with this, sewer systems with this as well. So again, that's a job I wouldn't like to get a phone call on a Monday to do. <laughs> but um, we're having technical oh, are we? blips again. But it's all right, we'll open it up here again. Yeah, it's opening up again. I was going too quickly through it there. You see, yeah, it was yeah, steaming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Probably about halfway through, or about. Yeah, I can, I can fly, I can fly through this. Um, <coughs> so, let's see if this stop. works. That laptop might be just starting to die. No, worries. so this is again an example of data. So obviously, you recognise this, the Lena Tower Pisa here, where we've used it. Again, you can use it in so many different areas. So for infrastructure, again, a lot of the lads talking about virtual, so you could go around the site with one of these one day and then train all your guys on that data, real life data in a virtual environment. You can measure everything off it. So again, you can use this stuff like that. Very much for discovery, the disaster recovery. So we see these when there's an earthquake or anything like that, these go straight in, map the whole area. So then we understand where we can get emergency services and different, very quickly into these areas. So, um, and we have, a, we have a, a vehicle mounted one. So that backpack one, you're getting about accuracies of 25, 30 mil. This again, we're getting absolute accuracies of 15 mil or something like this, but this is again, picking up data on a road at road speed. So we can have a, a, something like this, we get a junction. How would you go around and do this in traditional methods? How would you, how would you survey this? It would be, well, you could do it, but it would take a hell of a long time. Drive it in an afternoon, and bring it back in and then start processing that. And there is a lot of processing involved in this, but again, you can imagine, it just would, it wouldn't be possible to do this in, in uh, any, other, any other means. So, um, see if the video works here. Anyways, you 70 kilometers an hour, they're picking up that, that, oh, that stuff. Okay, so it's taking a million points a second. You can have two scanners on it if you wanted. It's, it's picking up GPS. It's got an IMU, so it tracks its trajectory. It knows whereabouts in space it is. That all goes into a software. You, you get your trajectory correct. If, you're, if you had to go through a tunnel, for instance, that's fine. We could introduce control points in the tunnel using a total station. Put those control points into the software. So, and then, so in here, put the control points in, say that's exactly where it is in space. It realigns the trajectory and all the scans and images are put on top of that trajectory. So again, I've data there that I can show you guys for that, but we're doing a lot of stuff. Um, we did a training course there last year with Murphy surveys, we're at an apex, a lot of these guys. So actually, this technology is available in Ireland now. There's six organizations that have done the training on it and that can do this for you, either backpack or with the, uh, with the, um, mobile mapping sensor. So I'll fly through this here, talking about who uses the point clouds, I think pretty evident. Um, we have different packages again then, so, so Cyclone, Cloudworks, which are plugins into Autodesk or Bentley tools, Jetstream, which enables this data to be run over servers. Um, and then we've other sort of viewers of the, of the point cloud data, like TrueView, whatever, if you need to get it out into the sites uh, to see this. So again, the data is massive um, that you're getting here. In the past, it used to be this, like loads of external hard drives, um, but we have come up with a solution for that, and the solution is called Jetstream. So one central source of the truth, so the, 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 
the massive point cloud is put on a server somewhere and everyone can connect into that point cloud. So using um, connectors of Jetstream connecting into it. So in the past, again, this is like everyone had to, had to go and you had to send the data to all of them. Every single software package, Revit, Navisworks, everything, Bentley here. Now we have a scenario where There we go. Goes into Jetstream. It's just the data. You know, and the one, <laughs> the, it's all this data, the big data here. It's one, it's one source of truth, and it just sends it out to everything. So you only have one scan data, not the case in the past. You have everyone trying to take copies of this scan data. Get on to the last one now. Again, the BLK, it is something that has changed so much for us as well. Um, we've been doing scanning for a long, long time, but this actually does make it so much more viable for organizations to get into it. Um, it is, it is a, yeah, very neat, it works very good with, with, with Autodesk. So the whole idea of this was Autodesk and Leica Geosystems come together, seen a need in the marketplace for a small scanner for doing BIM, for doing validations of models and different things like this. So it has the imaging, so it's called an imaging scanner. So imaging is a massive part of this. It takes the images first, then scans afterwards. Again, as we say, we three and a half, four minutes to do a medium res scan. Straight away into the Recap software, so Recap Pro software, um, and you can start doing measurements on site, taking notes on site. So you could scan this room and you wanted to fix that window, you could take it in the, in the, um, in the app, put a note on this, take a picture with it, and that will all come up and recap afterwards. You see in there, there is a thermal imaging um, sensor in this, set, in this unit. Recap, as in Autodesk, haven't got it wrote into their software yet. So they need to catch up on that side of it, but we will be utilizing it coming out with more um, apps in the future that will be taking all these sensors in. Um, but again, a fantastic, anyone who's used it with the recap comes in really, really nice. Then opening those, um, attaching those files in Revit or Navisware very, very easily. I can't do it because I'm not an expert in it, but all these guys, all these guys can. So yeah, we're, we're very, 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 very happy with this product. So I'm just gonna fly through it again, thermal, Come down, have a look at the data. I have some data down there um, that we did of the room here today as well, and of Cork yesterday. So I think we're getting near the end. Again, goes into all this, explained all that, all the different packages. These are our, our own software patches. So obviously, if we're going to come out with a piece of hardware, we'll always support it in our own software. So we have our own Cyclone register, which I can show you down there if you want, true view. But again, this VR one, we were talking about virtual reality there, so getting our sensors into, into virtual reality, that is, that is available there as well. So we can get the scan data and using the Hive, um, HTC Vive even, getting this into, into VR. So we see massive opportunities with, with that. Again, all wrapped around what we call our trusted services with SmartNet, our GPS positioning, um, um, sort of used equipment, Connex, our telema telematics, um, systems are training, technical support, and active assist as well. And that's me. Thank you very much. Don't know how long that was. Hopefully, it wasn't too long.